What is up guys, Taiki here. Today, I'm very honored to invite back Pete from Terabytes onto the channel to discuss Columbus 5 and all the uh, amazing Terra protocols that's you know, expected to launch uh, during the rest of the year. So how are you doing, Pete? Doing great. It's been crazy days. We just had a huge event in New York City where a lot of these protocols gave announcements and really ramped up. There's a little bit of nervousness because it's a major upgrade that brings a lot of important things. But overall, like, uh, it's been delayed a couple of times for safety checks and everyone's been running through it and we're on like iteration 12 of the test net. So people are pretty confident that it's going to go smoothly. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, do you know what the price of Luna was when you were first on my channel? Just curious. Oh man. <laughs> um, let's, uh, no idea. Single digits. Yeah, it was $6. All right. So $6, you know, 5X since Pete was on the channel. So hopefully uh, this is more bullish. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> let's do it 5X again. it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, because you're like more the Terra expert than uh, I am, uh, can you just briefly go over uh, like when is Columbus five when when the Columbus five upgrade is expected and like what like should stakers and like Luna Luna Tech should expect uh, post upgrade? Sure, yeah, Columbus five. Uh, this is currently Terra's Columbus four, so just the next one, right? Next upgrade, Columbus five is uh, scheduled to activate on the night, late night of the 29th or early morning of the 30th. So that's like maybe the day this comes out, right? That's super early Thursday mm -hmm. morning where I am in the US. And um, basically there's gotta be enough validators. There's gotta be enough voting power active after a certain time or it'll roll back to four and we'll try again later. Um, but so as long as everybody's on board and got their validators up and voting correctly and stuff, then that will be the new, the network will continue from then. It brings a, it brings a lot of stuff. Um, it makes future upgrades easier, all this technical stuff I won't get into, but like for holders of Luna and for investors and people looking around for opportunities, it uh, increases staking rewards on Luna. We'll talk about that really quick. And uh, it enables inner blockchain communication. So more cross blockchain protocols, we'll talk about that. And also there are a lot of projects, a lot of tokens, a lot of protocols, a lot of apps that are waiting on Columbus 5 because they, they don't want to deploy on the earlier version. So they're going to launch in the next couple of months. So those three main and exciting things coming. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, awesome, awesome. So, so speaking of like the increased staking awards, can you just like briefly go over like what that actually means? Like how much can people expect to earn uh, from the staking Luna on Terra Station? Sure, yeah. Feel free to share uh, I'll go screen. ahead and share a screen. Um, I've just created a little demo account here. You could try to trace it, but it'll just go back to an exchange and then you'll need bigger connections to trace it further. So, uh, so I've, I've seeded in uh, you know some a couple hundred dollars, which will be good for us to demo all this stuff, right? And uh, on the Terra Station app, you can come in and delegate. You're probably used to this. If you've done this with other networks, you pick some validators to delegate to, to stake to. And uh, when you do that, you get rewards. Now they're not listed in here, but uh, currently the delegation rewards are something around, it's okay, it's like 4%. Um, now that's not amazing, right? But if you, have, if you have faith in the future of Luna and you want airdrops and things like that, um, then that's that's pretty good. And this is scheduled to to go up. I think I, I would estimate that it's going to triple um, with Columbus 5. And the reason is when I come in here and swap right now and do some like swaps on chain, uh, the fees right now to do these swaps are burned. But uh, with Columbus 5, those swap fees are going to go to stakers. That's not going to... Uh, th there's still going to be a huge amount of burning. That's not going to reduce burning that much, but it is going to increase staking rewards a lot. So uh, as of right now, I think it would be go from 4% uh, to 14%. Of course, these numbers always change as more people get in, get out, prices move, stuff like that. Um, but in addition, a lot of projects uh, give airdrops to people staking. And if you're a Luna staker, you'll get uh, mirror airdrops and anchor airdrops. I know you've talked about those protocols. You'll get pylon airdrops right now every week, but then also some projects will launch initial airdrops to Luna stakers, to the whole network to say, hey, come check out our protocol. You know, you guys secure the network. Here's a certain percentage of our token supply, right? So you get this free airdrops that you have to come in and claim uh, in order to try out these protocols with, with real money, uh, but you, all you did was stake Luna, right? You didn't buy in and you could sell them or do whatever you want with them. Uh, now, some projects actually run their own 
validators. So not only can you get the staking rewards, but if you stake to these guys, Neptune or Orion or um, uh, Angel, which I don't, I'm not sure where that is in this list. Let's go by this. Um, Neptune or Orion or Angel, they'll give you tokens for their app uh, because you delegate to them. So we'll talk about Orion in a little bit. If you want Orion tokens and you don't want to buy them, or you can't buy them, then you can stake or vote for the Orion validator and you'll get some Orion tokens. So uh, there's a lot of airdrops involved, but the core staking rewards, which are paid out in Luna and stable coins, expected to triple as Columbus 5 rolls out. Yeah, gotcha. That's really exciting. Because uh, right now, all my Luna, like, they're, I have it bonded on Anchor uh, and just like I'm right. being paid to borrow and stuff. But you know, if these staking rewards go up and you know, if I can, I guess, get additional airdrops on top and uh, it, it might like give Anchor a run for their money or I mean, they're not competing, but uh, it'll allow me to think more openly about like, should I be staking on Terra Station or should I still be farming Anchor tokens? Right. Yeah, of course, you guys are familiar with Anchor. Um, we'll bridge right into something I think that you can do right now on Anchor, uh, and that's with Apollo, which I know you've mentioned, but uh, there's been some updates since then. So Anchor gives you, I mean, it still seems like an absurd concept, and it's not going to be this way forever, but you get paid to borrow, right? Um, and that happens other places too, but you get like, what, 12% to borrow. I know this doesn't seem like a very great percentage, but it's to borrow, okay? Usually you pay percentages to borrow. Um, and you can put in ETH or Luna. And one of the things with Columbus 5 that's really exciting is it's going to enable a lot more cross-blockchain communication. So soon there's going to be bonded Solana, bonded Atom, which is Cosmos, bonded Dot, Polkadot, and other assets in here as potential collateral. So if you have Solana and you're sitting on it and you don't know what to do with it, um, or DOT, you don't want to get involved in Poker starters or whatever, you just want to, then you can come in and borrow against it in, in Anchor Protocol soon, um, which is also like, it's going to be more stable because one asset taking a hard hit isn't going to take the protocol down, right? Um, so exciting things coming up. You can already use all this stuff multi-chain uh, with like the Terra Bridge, you can send assets around and use them on places on Ethereum, like Orion Money. You can deposit all these Ethereum stable coins and get anchor earnings, or you can use them on places like uh, Binance Smart Chain. Uh, here's Planet Finance IO, where you can farm um, in all these pools, and there's UST and stuff. So you can you can send coins across on bridges. But that's just going to be improved with Columbus Five. Uh, to where it's there's like decentralized interchain, like zip your UST over wherever you want. You can zip it over to Osmosis and farm there against Atom or, or Crow or some other Cosmos. You can zip it over to Ethereum or Solana or Binance Smart Chain or Harmony or, or wherever. And uh, apps will start building across these chains. So they're including multiple things in one interface, right? You don't need to worry about 80 transactions anymore to get where you want to go. You're just going to come in and use the app and be on whatever chains you want. Yeah, yeah. So exciting, exciting stuff. Um, but anyway, let's, if you're, uh, unless you have questions, more questions about Columbus 5, I do want to show viewers something they could do right now uh, that Go you mentioned. It. Yeah. And that is Apollo. Um, you might know Anchor. You might know that by borrowing you uh, or by getting, uh, by providing liquidity, you get these Anchor tokens. Uh, and you might know Mirror. I'm sure you've talked about Mirror where you can get these stocks and farm them by providing liquidity. And if you're really into Terra, you might even know Pylon, which is like uh, yield redirection. So like the yield you get uh, doesn't just dump back in your wallet. It goes to like get into token sales or support creators or um, you know dollar cost average into assets, stuff like that. Um, it, like you're paying with opportunity cost rather than just buying stuff, right? And uh, so you might know Pylon, but uh, you can actually take all these, any of these assets and put them into Apollo and they will auto compound. So let's say you like Anchor and you, uh, you want to provide liquidity on Anchor here, right? You're getting Anchor rewards, you have Anchor tokens, you want to provide liquidity and get this pretty good APR, 75% here. Um, but you want to make that an APY, right? You see the little note over here, 111% if you compound it daily. You want to get even better than that. You want to keep compounding 
all the time. And um, that's what Apollo does. It's auto compounding vaults. You've probably seen them on other platforms where this APR uh, of 75% actually becomes an APY of 96% because this uh, is frequently compounding for you. And mine's APR of 109% actually becomes an APY of 166%. Now for a very limited time, part of this, part of the rewards you get instead of going back into your pool are giving you Apollo tokens. This is how Apollo is selling its tokens. You don't go out and buy them um, you can get them at 25 cents a token by putting into these pools and part, just like 5% of your yield buys Apollo tokens. So uh, there's, this is called community farming. And until an estimated October 31st, I don't know when the exact date it's going to be uh, because it depends on how much farming is going on. Until an estimated October 31st, they're going to be farming out these Apollo tokens. And you, again, you don't buy them. The th only thing you do is you come in and deposit in one of these vaults, maybe you deposit a stock, um, like a stock liquidity provider. You think that it's really safe to do uh, S&P 500 and UST. You think those are safe assets and you put them in, you're only getting 16%, but you're probably expecting that the S&P 500 doesn't go to zero, right? So you're, you're not only getting these APYs on these safe assets, you're also getting some Apollo tokens as well through this community farming event. And uh, one of the things that's really exciting about this is how easy it is. You don't have to do 40 things. If you have a Terra wallet, I'll show you. If you have a Terra wallet and I put some UST in there, you can uh, buy it with a credit card on Mirror if you're in a, a jurisdiction that supports that. You can buy it on crypto.com, uh, you buy Luna on crypto.com or whatever, and KuCoin, wherever you trade and get it into your Terra wallet then you could just come in and deposit UST and it handles everything for you. So let's say I wanna do auto compounding, anchor UST farming. I don't wanna do 10 steps. I come in, I'm like, I want $200 worth of this. Confirm, you might, might or might not see my screen right now because it popped up the wallet. Um, it'll pop up my little wallet and ask me to enter my password and there you go. It uh, did it for me. It, uh, it took the UST, it popped an anchor, it provided liquidity. It staked the liquidity. It did all that in one go. And all I did was give it some UST. And when I want to pull out, you see, I have, I mean, roughly $200 in the pool right now. Um, there's a small fee. I come in and I just withdraw it and I can withdraw it just as dollars. So I don't have to deal with all this staking and unstaking and providing and withdrawing and selling and stuff. I can just go straight from UST to farming and straight from farming to UST. So pretty cool user experience over at app.apollo.farm. Yeah, definitely. It, it makes things a lot easier. And right now, uh, I, I cover this on my channel too, but now I'm, I'm farming with a uh, Galaxy UST farm. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's paying like 35% or something. Okay, like 27%. Yeah, and I'm just like farming some Apollo. And I, I really like these community farming events. It's like everyone has the chance to farm. You know, it's like, it's not like, you know, people are getting in pre-sales and whatnot. Uh, and I know yeah. Do Kwan and other uh, VCs were also uh, invested into Apollo. So uh, I just felt a lot safer with Apollo than with other auto compounders in the Terra ecosystem. And right, really yeah, useful. and one of, the, one of the things to note is that like, early VCs that got into Apollo and made it possible, they got it at 15 cents and your yield is buying it at 25 cents, um, which is, I mean, yeah, they got a 40% discount. That's pretty common, right? But it's, it's very open and like, hey, this is what's going on. And this is still not financial advice and all that, you know, disclaimers, disclaimers. This is still like a ridiculously low market cap compared to a lot of financial products we've seen. Um, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's it's something like a, let's see here. Like a that would be like a two point five million dollar market cap, you know, or, or a, a just a really low market cap for a DeFi product. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is an opportunity. There's not a lot for sale. You can't come in and drop millions of dollars here, um, but this is an opportunity to farm some of these Apollo tokens before. Uh, they go into IDO phase and things like that. They're letting the community get in first before the bots and the whales get in the IDO. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Apollo is a really cool one. Uh, I'm glad that they finally have an auto compounder uh, because like when I was like, you know, 
farming mirror. Uh, I have to like claim it, sell it, etc. But if they can do it all for me, then it just makes everything a lot easier. Yeah. Well, what are some other applications that uh, you're like, really looking forward to uh, post Columbus Five? Um, some others. Yeah. Let's. Uh, I mean, Orion's going to keep building out. We're going to see some really cool things from Orion. Uh, Orion lets Anchor functionality work on all these other blockchains. It's already on Ethereum. Um, but there are some that have nothing out yet that I think we still want to chat about, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll hit these quickly and uh, just stop me, ask questions if you have more questions. Uh, one is White Whale, and I haven't been paid or compensated by these at all. Um, I don't hold the tokens yet because they're not out yet. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, just non-disclaimer there, no financial incentive. Um, so White Whale's... Uh, for those of you who might not know this, Terra is all about stable coins. I've been using UST for everything because it's, it's designed to make these stable coins that live on any blockchain, uh, this decentralized stable coins that you know, banks can't come in and freeze and that uh, are super useful because you can use them for things like 20% interest on Anchor and stocks on Mirror and um, LPing and things like that, right? So White Whale comes in and there's already an arbitrage system to keep that UST stablecoin at a dollar and to keep all the other stablecoins at where they're supposed to be at. Um, if, if the price starts to drift a little bit, there's arbitrage, you can make money in order to bring it back. Um, but that's not really accessible to your average guy. Like I can't go do that right now. It's it's people that want to do that do that at like millions of dollars at a time because they're making like a cent right on each dollar. Um, so so they have like scripts and they have to interact with the contract directly. It's not easy, and I mean it arguably wouldn't be profitable for most people. That not that profitable. Um, so White Whale's coming in and building this uh, this project. And I know the guys at White Whale. I like them a lot. Um, and they're building this project that you can come in and deposit dollars and those dollars are used automatically to keep the peg and you make money on it because there's these arbitrage actions taken. And since it's, there are pools involved and, and bots involved and war chests and stuff like that, um, it's more profitable to, to keep taking all these actions in order to arbitrage, right? You might, you might get eaten alive by fees if you try to do these tiny arbitrage actions on your own, but not at scale. Right. So you come in, you be the whale, not because you suddenly have a lot of money, but because you're you're kind of joining, you're a piece of a whale, right? You're you're joining with other people and yeah. um you're doing this stuff. And there's not just the arbitrage on the peg, but you look over here, there's Luna B Luna and other things coming in, other stable coins. Um, so making money in order to help the ecosystem by keeping it's like another layer of protection around the stable coin peg. Every once in a while, we see a dip a little bit and you can get insurance and stuff, but still people like uh, people come out and say, hey, maybe the pig is is going to just death spiral uh, sometime, someday, right? They, they come up with this bank run scenario, uh, Multicoin did recently in, the, in a paper. And well, this is another level of protection around that stablecoin pig. It's so important. Um, they had super cool. Just just a lot of cool things beyond that as well with their war chest ideas. It's, it's something that I really look forward to. And they're not just Terra. You see down at the bottom, they're looking for Solana and Cosmos as well. Yeah. I know I said I'd keep it quick, but... <laughs> no, this is super cool. And I love how like... Because the most important asset in the Terra ecosystem is UST, right? Um, right. People think it's Luna because it just keeps going up. But at the end of the day, like UST is the most important. And, you know, White Whale is designed to... You know, help keep peg of USD, right? Through the arbitrage, like burning Luna and minting Luna, et cetera. Orion is looking to bring UST yields cross chain uh, on Ethereum and other chains, right? Uh, I think I think they offer like 20% on Harmony as well. Uh, so, you know, all these protocols trying to create utility around UST, that's the most important asset. And I mean, UST has been <laughs> up and to the right uh, for the past couple of months. So it's definitely been working. And I love how the community is just like, I guess creates all these products to support USD uh, because it, it it is a it is a bold concept, right? Like a decentralized algo uh, algo stable coin. Uh, it's when, when you first hear about it, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. But uh, as you use these applications, and as like there's so much utility on uh, utility for USD, not only on Terra but like on Solana, Harmony, etc. Uh, like like you start to see like like 
the dots start to connect, right? And it, it just starts to make sense. And you, right now you have Mars, which is like something that I'm the most looking forward to because uh, I'm, a, I'm a money markets guy. And you know, I, I don't know when Mars is coming out. I think sometime, sometime this year, but uh, can you just like briefly go over like what like Mars is and like what we can expect? Sure, yeah. Mars, like you said, money market protocol. There's some uh, distinctions um, that they've, they've done with their, uh, how they manage risk and how they manage... Um, how they how they optimize, all right? The you've got to when you're doing a money market, you've got to optimize rates in order to have the as close to the ideal like borrower and depositor balance as you can, right? You do, you want the system to be in balance because you got people putting in money on one side and people borrowing money on the other, and uh, so they've uh, they've made some uh, advancements. Both looking at other protocols, uh, there there's people in Mars who are friends with Ave and Compound and love those protocols. Um, and then also they've got some uh, some connections with with mathematics guys and uh, Delphi Digital, a, a group that I really like, um, and uh, and they've come up with a like another another uh, iteration of this this balance, like a, a smart um, a smart mechanism that like pulls the optimization towards where it should be over time. Like uh, I, I don't want to get too much into the weeds on that. Uh, but that and the governance and things, and of course, cross chain and using Terra and things like that, uh, make it a really cool, there's nothing else here on this page, um, yeah. but a really cool money market, multi-asset money market protocol. And one of the use cases they actually put out recently, I'm not sure I'll be, I don't want to go to their telegram. You know. um, I'm not sure that uh, I'm going to be able to find it uh, right away or should I? Oh, here it is. Yep is the idea of leveraged yield farming. Now, if you've been in Ethereum, you've, uh, you're familiar with Alpha Hamora, uh, then you are familiar with leveraged yield farming. And they're also doing something called the, uh, not the Iron Bank, the Red Bank, right? Which is like uh, Cream Finance's Iron Bank, which was uncollateralized lending to other smart contracts. Now, if you've really followed Ethereum, you know that there was a hack involving both of these things and $35 million went poof, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, right into the hacker's wallet. So um, these are like cutting edge, high risk things. And we've got to remember that. But the idea that you can lend out to a smart contract without collateral is really powerful because you can basically, like it's a smart contract. So you can ensure that the contract's going to pay you back, right? It's going to pay the protocol back. And the idea that you could do leverage yield farming. So I can come in and have a certain amount of money and yield farm on leverage. Like I've got more money, more, more power. I've got more yield farming power for my money than I would normally have. Um, and so there's some charts down here in the red paper, which I, light paper, I guess it is, that show you how this would work, how you'd have like, you could leverage and expect more profit and then pay off your debt with that profit. And you just make, you just make net profit, right? So uh, not to get too much in the weeds, but I'm really excited to see how this, how this plays. And I know that the guys at Delphi and um, they're not owning Mars, but they're contributors and all the other contributors are really big on UX and things like that. So uh, I'm excited to see what the interface is gonna look like for this, like come in with a thousand dollars and yield farm as though you had 2000, right? Um, and pay, pay interest in order to do that. Um, I'm excited to see how this UX works because uh, it's something that I think would, yeah, could, could really be cool. And I'd certainly take advantage of it, not financial advice. <laughs> um, what, uh, what other questions would you maybe have about Mars? Do you think? It's like, do you know what, do you know which assets can be used as collateral on Mars? Like I heard you can use M assets like stocks yeah. and like AUSD <laughs> and stuff. Like, is that true? Yeah. Or I'm, I'm glad answer? you mentioned that. I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah, yeah, it's it's not just UST, uh, but you can use stocks uh, like M assets, which don't have to necessarily just be stocks. There's M Bitcoin and things yeah, yeah. like that. Um, but also, uh, eventually, Nebula ETFs will be in here, and uh, using AUST is a really interesting one. You could do that right now. I'll show you really quick with this demo account. Let's say I put in, uh, and then I'll explain what it means. Let's say I've got my Terra connected here. I've got a hundred dollars. I'm going to deposit it in here. Okay. Let's give it, let's give it a little bit more for fees sake. This time I will save my password for an hour. Okay. So I've deposited a hundred dollars into anchor. If you don't know how anchor works, 20% might seem absurd, but it makes sense uh, because it uses proof of stake yields on all sorts of chains to do that. 
So I've got roughly 20% I'm earning, right? Um, this is actually like a, if you, if you drop down your anchor here, you see you have this asset called AUST. That, that is my $100 position. It's 90 AUST. Why doesn't it match? Because AUST gets more valuable over time. You can always check the price on the dashboard. Right now it's 110 and it's gonna keep going up. So the amount of AUST I have remains the same, but it gets more valuable, right? That, if you think through it, that makes sense, right? Because it represents my like underlying anchor position, just like an LP token does. When you deposit an LP pool, you get these tokens and it's some random value, right? Well, that represents your share. So now what I can do is I can take this asset, which is growing in value because it is this position and I can use this as collateral. And now suddenly I'm not just using dollars as collateral somewhere. I'm using like a savings account that's growing by 20% per year as collateral. So I can come in the mirror now and I've got, let's say I wanna borrow a stock for some reason. Um, I can short it or I can long it, right? So I'm gonna borrow, come in and borrow, uh, like maybe I think Tesla is gonna do really well. And so I wanna borrow some of it. Um, I come in and I drop down, I use Anchor UST. Now I'm borrowing and my collateral is growing in value. So even if Tesla takes a hit, as long as it's not more than like a 20% hit over a year, I'm, I'm still in the, you know, I'm still in the black. Like Tesla price could even go down this year and I would still be ahead of the game money-wise as long as it didn't go down more than like 20%, right? And so my position is going to get safer and safer over time. So like here I'll borrow um, and uh, I've just borrowed some Tesla against that AUST. So I've got this, this self-yielding collateral. Now notice, I'm gonna, if I come into my page now, it says I have zero because it's not here anymore. It's, it's staked as collateral and mirror. The anchor team is aware that this is not ideal, like it should display here and they're working on that, okay? Yeah. Um, but on my mirror, it says, look, hey, you're, you're borrowing M Tesla and here's your collateral. It's 90 AUST, which is worth this much UST. And uh, this is just gonna grow over time. Uh, so yeah. it's, it's a really cool option. And you're right, you could do that on Mars as well. Using AUST as a, a collateral and another, some other kind of assets in DeFi is really exciting uh, to have these like self-yielding assets you can deploy in other places. Yeah, and I have like guides on like how to, like, if, if you can go to the farm tab, uh, it, it'll sure. show like some long farm and short farms. I, I, got, I have tutorials on how to do this too. Like for example, like today, Google, like you'll be paid 66% to short Google and you, you essentially have to click on that and like do the same process Pete just went through. Yeah, and you can and you'll use be AUST paid. there too. Yeah, yeah. so uh, if you're interested in how to do that, then like uh, I, I have a whole playlist on the Terra ecosystem. So I'll, I'll provide a link to that in the description below. Uh, so yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah, also like um, I, I heard like speaking of like, I guess like uh, decentralized exchanges, like I've heard like good things about Astroport. I, I know the Delphi guys are also super, super bullish on that. So can you like go over like, right. like what actually is it and like what we can expect in the coming uh, weeks or months? So uh, it's another one of those places you'll go and you'll notice there's not really a, it's just a hero page. There's yeah. just, it just says, hey, it's an, it's a DEX, but it's, it's a little bit more than that because they've taken, uh, again, these, uh, they, they like and know the guys over at Curve and places like that. And they figured out how to make a DEX where there are different kinds of pools uh, that are optimized for what, what the assets are. So it doesn't make sense necessarily. For example, if you have an, uh, an S&P 500 on one side and um, I don't know, pancake on the other side, it doesn't necessarily make sense. It's not necessarily the best to have a 50-50 pool, right? <laughs> or like um, a stable coin against something in general, not necessarily the best to have a 50-50 pool. You can do better, like you can have more efficient pools that are not just XYK pools or something like that. Um, you can have all kinds of, of algorithms and you see these on curve, you see these uh, kind of various different pools. Well, they figured out how to have a DEX that has uh, multiple pools that are best for the assets involved. Um, and it's gonna be a cross chain, a decentralized exchange. You can read the light paper. So there is information out about it at astroport.medium.com. Um, and that's just, 
it's, it's really most, I mean, we have an interview with uh, a lead contributor at Astro Report that you could check out on the Terabytes channel. It's the same with Mars. We recently interviewed Jose uh, um, Mercado, Jose actually says, Jose Mercado, uh, who is like a lead contributor, a contributor at Mars Protocol. And he talks a lot about the things we just talked about uh, with graphics and everything. So you can go check that out if you're more interested on any of these. Um, but really excited to have this because we, we need this stuff. Uh, we need a really good AMM. Here you see that they're talking about pool types. Um, and the, a lot of factors go into what the best pool types are. And they've done a lot of research on what these best pool types are and how to automate, like how to, how to pick them. And that's all gonna be publicized. You know, it's not, it's not public right now. They're still building early stage, all gonna be public, all gonna be open. And it's gonna have the typical governance and airdrops and things that Terra protocols have. Yeah, this is super cool because I feel like, like right now there aren't that many dApps on Terra. Uh, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, like the dApps that are available are like amazing. Uh, but like post Columbus Five, you know, there, like there are teams working on this type of stuff, and I think the only Dex uh, on Terra right now is like Mirror and like TerraSwap, which TerraSwap, you know, like yeah. it's, it's good, but you know, like it could be better. Uh, and uh, I think I, Astroport is like introducing more capital efficient uh, pools uh, that'll, that'll make things more like efficient, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, TerraSwap was built as a part of Mirror. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. essential, right? I mean, this this little trade interface you get on Mirror is just a, a different front end for TerraSwap. Um, and you can find little gems here. Like uh, a lot of people don't know that you can provide Luna, be Luna and get like 30% right mm -hmm. now um, on that pair. Uh, but it's definitely like rudimentary. Um, there's, it, it, I don't want to call it rudimentary. It is, it's rudimentary, right? Um, and it was just built as a part of Mirror, and you can feel that. And there's no stats, there's no history, there's no like, uh, let me find this Astroport. Uh, I think you'll get excited about this if I can find this Astroport uh, uh, screenshot they did. Uh, let's see here. Just to show you, they, they've, they realized that like, we're coming in and we're trading on these DEXs. Oops, let's, let's not show all my messages, all right? <laughs> can we cut? Uh, <laughs> If I, do I have them up on everything? I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you notice that, let, let me see if there's anything sensitive in here. No, no. This is so ambiguous. No. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> I'll close them, but don't worry about it. All right. Um, I did a whole video once where there was a message, uh, like message. I had to reshoot it. <laughs> um, yeah. Astro, let's go. Okay, so back to Astro Report. Um, let's see. There's there's a screenshot here that I want to show you. Yes, here it is. Um, they realized that like you, we come into Uniswap or Pancake Swap or TerraSwap or uh, or wherever we're trading, and we don't really have stats on our own personal history and like uh, like all this stuff involved. Um, you can come in, and this is just a little snapshot. Um, showing historical APYs on pools and things like that, which is currently pretty hard data to get. Um, there's there's definitely places that that are better than others for getting this kind of information. But I mean, this is a this kind of information, and uh, there's more analytics. You can see you can blow it up. There's uh, more analytics involved as well, and more like just helping to make you let you make a more informed choice on whether to provide liquidity in a pair or not. You know, um, that that just isn't isn't present in something like TerraSwap, uh, right? Where it's just swap now. And I have no idea what I'm getting unless I dive in a, a lot deeper. So uh, I'm excited to see what Astroport is bringing to the table. They're trying to make things as easy and informative as possible for liquidity providers. Awesome, yeah. Thanks for showing us the dashboard. It's, it's, it's really cool, yeah. Uh, like these this tools. Is, this yeah, is a long time ago, relatively. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I don't know. Um, no, no this, worries. This is a, a relatively long time ago. I know they have some more stuff coming out soon. So something to keep an eye on. Awesome. Uh, I think so the, I'll, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I can talk about uh, just a couple more projects really quick uh, that are up and coming that viewers might want to keep an eye on. Um, but then we can bridge into something you wanted to talk about as well, which is NFTs. Yeah. So you, I think you want to talk about Andromeda and Levana, was it? Sure, yeah. And um, just, uh, I guess we already talked oh, yeah. about Osmosis. 
Um, but Osmosis, for those of you who don't know, is cross-chain, and Terra is enabling with Columbus 5 inter-blockchain communication. So uh, you come in here, you see that I can deposit in a, in a decentralized way into this like hub. I can deposit assets that are from these networks that are plugged into to, uh, to IBC, to inter-blockchain communication. You might only be familiar with like Atom and Crow, but you might be familiar with some of these as well. Where, well, Terra assets will be here and also be farmable against Atom, Cosmos, and, uh, and other things too on uh, Osmosis. So like an inner blockchain uh, DEX farming experience, at least until last report is out, available in Osmosis zone. Yeah, Osmosis is super cool. Um, I, I've been like, <laughs> my, my viewers are always like, yo, talk about Atom and Osmosis. And like, don't worry, like, I'll have uh, guests on in the future. Um, like I, I, I like Akash, I like Persistence, like liquid staking is really cool. And you know, when uh, Terra enables IVC and like there's UST, right? Uh, Cause I, I think all the farms are like two volatile assets. So it's kind of difficult to mm -hmm. provide liquidity, but once the UST is on here, then it'll be a lot easier uh, for people to like provide liquidity because, you know, like for example, like Akash Adam pool, like if you're, uh, people might not feel too comfortable uh, being a liquidity provider for this. Whereas if it right. was like a Akash UST, uh, then you know it's more predictable like what's going to happen uh so you know i'm going to have a youtuber named crypto Cito on some, sometime soon uh because he's like a super like a super bullish adam so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll talk about it at adam in the future cool if you do play around just remember some pools are 50 50 i've gone oh, okay. <laughs> i've assumed and gotten you know like why why did i not put as much in as i thought you know it's because uh the the Exchange sometimes views uh, like Atom is more stable than some of these others. So sometimes you can run and you got to check. Yeah. Um, one of the exciting projects, and this is not something you can go and invest in right now. Uh, it's just not, it's just something that I thought was super exciting. came out of TFI Alpha. Um, I mean, you go to their site and they have three year plan, right? <laughs> yeah. um, is Andromeda. And Andromeda started, we all thought it was an NFT protocol. We'll get into NFTs on Terra in a second. There's a lot happening really fast. Um, but we all thought it was an NFT thing. It was kind of unclear what it was. And then at our event last week, they dropped this uh, just amazing demo of, of what you could do with it. And it was uh, not just NFT collectibles, but it was, uh, well, let me see. I got to really dive down into the text nobody reads here. An application platform layer, a codeless uh, layer using Andromeda digital objects to build things. So like, I don't know if you're familiar, if anyone's familiar with the idea of like codeless websites. I mean, WordPress, I guess, is kind of code, no code, right? But you can use uh, Bubble to build no code apps and things like that. Well, Andromeda is trying to build, uh, allow you to build things like uh, DeFi instruments or NFT collectibles or even custom apps without having to learn to code um, by building these modules that you can like plug in. And um, let's see, like, look at this. Here's an NFT collectible. You could pick a module for storage, a module for royalties on the NFT, a module for taxes, a module for a signed legal agreement, a module, right? And it all in a no code setup. So you can deploy NFTs, NFT platforms, DeFi protocols, whatever, by like plugging these modules together. And uh, now I, one of the team members on this thing is, uh, I don't know if, if that's here, but he's public, is one of the guys who developed, helped develop the ERC-721 standard, like the original oh, okay. NFT standard. Um, and uh, he's, uh, we're gonna have him on as soon as possible, uh, but it's just an exciting project. They've already gone through like seed series A funding and you can see they're, they're planning, they're, they're Terra native, but they're planning also secret Solana, Cosmos, um, and then ultimately their own chain for scalability and other reasons. Uh, and hopefully, you know, at the beginning of the next year, this will be something that is just it's very interesting for people to like deploy stuff um, without having to code. Anyway, Nugget, I mean, it's not, yeah, I mean, it's it's not cool, something it's cool. you could dive into right now, but yeah. something you can look at right now is Terra NFTs. Um, and they've started to take off. There's this, uh, like, there's some copycats like loot, space loot, um, which is, is kind of tradable now. 
Uh, you can go into a, a very early stage, like, like a contract audit is being scheduled. It's not live yet. <laughs> um, marketplace and trade space loot. Um, I've gotten like into space. It's pretty expensive by this point, but um, we'll see how it settles out, right? Um, maybe some games being built on this idea of these, uh, these spaceships here, uh, similar to loot on Ethereum and galactic punks, similar to crypto punks on, uh, on Ethereum as well. And so there's, there's some of these copycats, which might do really well, might not, who knows? I love the art involved, but they're, they're copying, right? But we are also starting to see some originals, not just some like original cartoony art and stuff like that. Um, but some art collections that are getting more original and like here's a tales of terra.art is a like famous terra moments you pointed out the mouse cursor here <laughs> <laughs> um, i i didn't notice the mouse cursor just just yeah. cc it's, I a, didn't, I, it's a it's a great cursor it's a great cursor yeah <laughs> um so these great like terra moments both positive and negative like uh francis coppola here saying that um oh, well that didn't take me where oh. i wanted to go at all it, it essentially saying. captures it, it, like this essentially captures like the like important moments of Terra, right? Uh, yeah. Like historical, like with historical significance. So each, I guess, scroll has like a tweet or a quote from like a person or like a whatever account. Uh, like for example, like the Luna one. I will get a Luna tattoo at a hundred. <laughs> Mike and Overgrats, and that's <laughs> NFT. So if it actually gets to a hundred, then. You know, you can assume that the Luna community is going to just spam this to Novo and he's going to be forced to get a tattoo, even if he said this is a joke. <laughs> I mean, he <laughs> says he's already has the design. Oh, so, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I think he expects it. <laughs> um, so anyway, not financial advice, Luna, $100. <laughs> um, I yeah. mean, the, the entire community really has this like uh, X number is FUD meme going on, like $40,000 yeah. is FUD. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is so just some really early stage, but we're starting to see marketplaces come online. And um, I mean, NFT interest moves from chain to chain. If you've been following how NFTs have gone, like like Solana NFTs and things like that. Um, so if, I mean, if Solana suddenly starts getting more congested than uh, it even is, has more issues, maybe like the NFT artists and contributors will go look elsewhere. Will that be Terra? I don't know. Um, I think people tend to think it's like FTM or uh, or Harmony or something like that, uh, where the attention is going to move next. I don't know. Do you have an opinion on uh, on what chains we should be looking for for NFT activity? NFT. I mean, I, I feel like I'm not an NFT expert, so I don't want to like claim like I know anything. But I feel like the majority of the valuable NFTs will be be on Ethereum, uh, and you know you're going to have copycats on all chains uh, because you know people feel like they missed out. And I guess if you're like an artist. Some, some artists are just in it for the cash grab. So like, they'll just like tweak a little, like tweak, tweak something and just like launch it on a new chain. Um, I, I think Phantom, FTM ecosystem, um, I think they recently announced uh, like a NFT marketplace. Um, and given that like their, their fees are super low, um, people are super excited about that, but uh, I'm not, I'm not going to claim that I know anything, but uh, I, I know some FTM, NFT bulls, uh, that are looming uh and you know phantom is also a really good ecosystem um i actually bridged there yesterday actually uh, to form on things uh, but um yeah uh do, do you have anything else you want to talk about or like is yeah, this like well first i want to kind of ride on that a little bit like yes yeah. i think ethereum is ethereum's the place for nfts to be right now for sure but like right now nfts are kind of doing things that we could do before um, like whenever there's a new technology first, we kind of like take the old things and do them again in the new technology. Like the internet came out and people didn't immediately create Facebooks and Amazons. They created like email, which is basically digital letters and like, uh, static web pages, like digital encyclopedias and like, and like, uh, buy order, like mail order magazine, like catalog order sites, right? Like, uh, the ideas of like social networks and YouTube and, uh, Amazon and eBay and, um, uh, more recent like video sites, uh, social sites, things like that. They didn't happen for a really long time because first we recreated the old stuff. That's what we're doing with NFTs. We're like, taking what art was and, and making it a little bit better because it's digitally sendable and things like that. And, uh, you know, um, 
and it doesn't degrade, whatever, things like that. But we're really just like copying art onto NFTs. But NFTs have huge potential in terms of like royalties and uh, affecting mechanics and like in-game items and things like that. And potential, I don't, I don't know. If I knew some of the other potential, I would not be on a podcast. I'd be out trying to build it, right? Like, like if you knew about Amazon early in the internet, right? You knew that Airbnb was going to be huge. You'd be trying to make that thing, right? Um, so like, yeah, I agree with you. Ethereum is a place for NFTs to be right now in, in terms of collectibles and all sorts of things. But NFTs might have uses and applications that we nobody's thought of. And I've, we've thought of some, like, uh, like royalties, right? We've thought of some, like embedding legal language or taxes or, or other things um, into gaming too. NFTs. Yeah, and gaming is huge. Like you could do things like Taiki. You've got a, I don't know, what's, what's a game you like to play? You might like to play. Give us a game. Give us a game. Or um, just pick a game. FIFA. 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 All right. <laughs> you've got a FIFA, like you're online and you've got a FIFA team and the striker has like, uh, I don't know, some really sick jer NFT jersey or I don't know, a, a hat. Right. I don't know. What, you know, <laughs> what, what NFTs would you have in a FIFA? Like maybe you got a really like cool, shoes, shoes or yeah, okay, okay, know, really like thick, yeah. thick calves or something. It might be hard to see, right? Yeah. Okay. So you got something amazing. You got a, like an aura. Let's give you an aura. You got this like golden aura and it's an NFT and there's only one of them in the game. Right. And you're playing amazingly and you're scoring goals and someone that's watching or playing against you like decides, Hey, I got to get me some, some auras because those are cool. And they go and buy them. You should get a cut of that, because you helps make the sale. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. like, and so like these game mechanics of like, oh, this guy was in a party with this guy with an axe who did really well, and then he went and bought an axe. So I'm gonna give the original guy a cut. Those kind of mechanics, we're gonna see some of that stuff coming in, and just making NFTs way more than just collectibles. And to that end, like, I want to talk. The final project I want to talk about is Lavana. And the reason this made me think of this is they're doing NFTs. I don't know how yet, but they're doing these meter shower drops that you can, that are getting auctioned off and they might have dragon eggs in them. And dragon eggs are somehow going to allow people like uh, advantage or, 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 or governance or, or um, access, early access or, or something on their leverage any asset platform. I don't know what that's going to be yet, but they're going to figure out how to make these NFTs that aren't just pretty rocks, but like they actually bring you into an ecosystem or give you like something special, you know, some special aspects to this DeFi ecosystem. Other projects are trying to do this too, where NFTs can like power you up on their DeFi platforms or can help you do a certain strategy really well. Maybe it all washes out and it has a negative side too. So it's fair for everyone, but help you with a strategy. Well, on Levana, they're doing this leverage and the asset thing. They'll start with a Luna 2X token. So if you like where Luna is going, you can get a Luna 2X token. And hey, it does. if Luna does well, it does twice as well. If Luna goes down, it goes twice as far down. So, uh, but like, hey, you like it long. You don't want to deal with all these complicated, you don't want to pay insane rates at perpetuals on KuCoin or whatever you, you'd use. Well, you just get the Luna 2X token, right? Um, and, and, but they're also working on leveraging any asset, which means they're waiting for Columbus 5, like everybody else, but eventually they're going to start deploying. And you're going to have assets that are just anything you can get a price feed of. So you can bet on weather or sports or, or um, you know, whether the outcomes of elections or something on leverage. And just like suddenly anything that you might predict or, or bet on becomes an asset that can be traded and used as collateral and, and so on and so forth in the Terra and multi-chain ecosystem. So I don't know all the implications of this. I haven't thought through all of it, um, but it's another yet another exciting protocol that's building. If you research the team on this, the team is pretty stacked <laughs> and uh, they're just this exciting stuff. It's, bring, it's working in NFTs that are not just creativity and artistry but potentially like have utility and a reason you would want them and a reason they would have resale value in the future you know uh, so nfts are more than just collectibles right now they're majorly collectibles but they're going to become in-game assets they're going to become 
access keys. They're going to become uh, boosts in protocols and banking and gaming and everything. I, I just I used to be major bear on NFTs because I thought, oh, digital rocks like back in the day. But now I'm, I think they're one of the most exciting things because they're programmable collectibles. Anyway, yeah. rant over, rant over. I hope you found yeah. Lavana interesting. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah. That's launching this fall, like most of the things we've talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And they're also incubated by Delphi Labs. Yeah. Delphi Labs yes. is huge in the Terry ecosystem. And yeah, like super, super, super cool guys. Awesome. Yeah. They also do. Uh, uh, they also do Stellana, and they uh, do uh, like they were relatively early in Axis Infinity. So overall, um, I think some smart guys. Yeah, over at Delphi. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, thank thank you for introducing all of these new, new protocols that we can expect to deploy uh, probably like sometime in Q4, uh, right? And yeah, yeah, like Columbus Five. I'm super excited for. Uh, so I guess to look into the future, like what are you most excited for, I guess, for the rest of the year as it relates to this Terra or just in the crypto in general? Oh man, hard call. <laughs> I mean, I see bullish things in Bitcoin. I see bullish things in Ethereum. Um, so let's keep it to Terra. Um, I've named, I mean, obviously I picked protocols that I think are interesting for this video. There are dozens more. Um, and we continue to burn Luna. I'm just, I'm really excited about where this ecosystem is going. Uh, one announcement that was made at our TFI Alpha event was Alice Finance. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alice. I should, this, this isn't a farming opportunity, but it's something people might not, might want to know about. Alice Finance is, I don't know if this is their web address, but they made an announcement that in November, uh, well, that's definitely not where I want to go. Viewers, don't do that. Don't type in URLs wondering. You might get to a spam or like a phishing URL, right? Um, but it's alice.co. And uh, they announced that metal debit cards, uh, metal because well, that's a long story, debit cards are coming to the US in November. That's like in a month and change, right? Um, and you can take UST to fiat with no fees. Uh, and spend it like or like with a debit card. Uh, that's in insane, US. yeah. And also go other ways and and eventually bank transfers. I don't know when that's coming out, um, but like just send send and receive money throughout Terra and use it on in Anchor for like get twenty percent um, or get there. You could just keep it in Alice and get uh, like I don't know if this is insured or not, but get like a uh, roughly ten percent just on your checking account in Alice and then just go spend it at something right um with uh and this has been in the works for a while people have been super excited about it it's been very much under the radar uh there's no alice token this is not bullish for an alice token this is uh a positive for the luna and ust ecosystem and for crypto adoption in general uh they're partnered with uh, like a real bank uh, they're, they've been working on regulation and things this whole time, making sure they're compliant and coming to the U S with debit cards in November. So we yeah. can spend this funny money without having to like buy gift cards or go out through CryptoCom or KuCoin or something, uh, just, just out of store. And, um, there's so many other companies working on this tick in Australia, cash in emerging markets, uh, and, and places in Europe. Um, and there's, there's places elsewhere in Asia and they're doing the same thing to make UST, not just more usable in DeFi, but more usable everywhere. I think that is super exciting. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally forgot about Alice. Uh, I, I saw that video where like, I think the slides of like metal debit cards and everyone was like, yeah, metal debit cards. Yeah. And like, I definitely want to get my hands on, uh, hands on this, uh, when it does come out. Hopefully the SEC doesn't protect us uh, by you know preventing us earning like twenty percent yield on our dollars, but uh, ho hopefully the team uh, has that part uh, figured out. But well, awesome, yeah. Thank you for bringing this up. Um, I'll definitely be following them like on Twitter, uh, seeing like where their progress is. But you know, um, I think you run one of the best YouTube channels covering the Terra system. So uh, can you just like briefly talk about that and where they can find you on Twitter, etc.? Sure. Yeah, we are terabytes. I'll share my screen again. I think I should not. Yeah. I'll provide a link in. I'll, I'll provide a link in the description below as well. But yeah, generally, like when Pete comes on the channel, it's right. bullish for Lu bullish for the Lu Lunar players. So, <laughs> so 
we are we are terabytes yeah right okay bullish for luna price uh thanks viewers come check us out at terabytes it was great to be on uh Tyke's podcast again love it um love everything you've done and uh, just congratulations on the growth uh of, of your channel here uh but you can come over to the terabytes channel if you want some terra specific content it tends to be pretty advanced but we're actually working on bringing on somebody else uh who will give more introductory content since uh, we've been in it for months, right? We want some more stuff for people who are brand new to the ecosystem. Uh, but terabytes at terabytes pod on Twitter. We've got regular community chats where you can come in. And if you want to turn off your mic, you can come in and, and voice chat with us in the ecosystem on Fridays in our Telegram, which is at the terabytes pod. That's the Telegram channel. Um, and if you want to listen, just go to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash terabytes, or you can find us, you know, just go to terabytes pod on Twitter and find all the links there. Uh, we, we run a podcast YouTube. Uh, if you prefer audio podcast apps, we run a terabytes validator. You could stake to, if you're undecided who to stake to, to get those sweet staking rewards, we take uh, a commission that's lower than most of the validators and it helps support the show. So come and uh, check out terabytes anytime. And we'll be happy to have you happy to hear from you. Happy to help you get started in the Terra ecosystem. Awesome. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Pete. Uh, so I'll wrap up the video there and, uh, you know, Columbus five, um, super excited. Uh, Terra ecosystem, super cool. Uh, I love how, you know, through Alice and like the Chai application, there's like real world use cases, uh, you know, that we can point to. Yeah, thank you guys for watching and have a good one and have fun farming out there.